Hello everyone, this is Chaos King True coming to you guys with our first beginner's guide for Conqueror's Blade. With the new Season six, 7 kicking off uh, and new players coming to the game, I figured it would be a great start to time to make a series like this where we can actually explain the game to newer players. That way to make the learning curve a little bit easier for you. Um, the first thing I usually get when I get questions about Conqueror's Blade is what weapon should I use? And what do I do with all the stuff that the game just kind of throws at me? Um, so I will be answering both these questions in this video. Um, all of my episodes when I do these will actually answer two questions at a time. That way it allow you guys to digest the information. If you like this type of content, please make sure to subscribe and hit all on the notifications. So that way you can see when our next episode comes out. And do me a favor and hit that like button because that does help out a ton too. With all that being said, let's hop right into it. So to address the first question, what weapon should I use? Weapon choice should be based off of how you want to win your matches, whether it be killing as many hero players as possible, controlling a zone, trying to kill as many units and control the flow of the battle, or supporting your teammates by making sure your team's buffed up or giving that specific buff that helps you push the tip to win the game. Sometimes it's even good just to be a player that wastes the enemy's time and be annoying. But to answer the question in more of a competitive format, we'll start by breaking down the play styles that I like to say there are in the game. Um, I would say there are currently three different type of players that play Conqueror's Blade. The first type is the 1v1-er. Um, this is the guy who wants to try to find the 1v1s, try to find the picks, try to find the enemy heroes and kill as many as possible. Um, this is a, an unorthodox playstyle and not a lot of people see it as popular, but it actually is one of my favorite playstyles because if you are able to pull it off, you can actually make a lot of cool plays, makes the game a little bit more fast paced and you get a bunch of kills. Who doesn't like to do that? Uh, the second play style is the general. Um, this is the player that actually wants to focus more on unit combat. So this is the more orthodox way to kind of play the game. Controlling your units, making sure you have good positioning, um, using your units to get most of your kills, and then you only fight if you have to, usually if a 1v1er comes up on you, or if you guys get so close in the conflict that you have to basically go fisticuffs with somebody. The third class, the third role, rather, I should say, that I would like to say is in the game is more of the support. So these are the players that play that have the heals, that play the buff classes, that basically like to try to keep their team as buffed up as possible, basically backing up the general while the 1v1er kind of runs around. Um, a good support can literally turn the tide of a battle. So supports are definitely needed. Um, there is a fourth class that, I know I said three, but there's a fourth class that I personally like to say is in the game, it's called the Rage Baby. Um, <laughs> in the name, it's very, they rage over anything and everything. Every little mistake that's ever made, they rage. Um, the best way you can actually deal with that is to literally just mute them and report them and move on. Don't pay attention to them. Just like in any PvP game, they are there. Now, let's break down the weapons based off of each playstyle. Um, the first we'll go over are the 1v1 weapons. Um, so for this specific playstyle, I would recommend the dual blades, the poleaxe, the short sword and shield, the short bow, and the spear. Of the dual blades and the polex have an unkillable ultimate the unblockable ultimate i should say um that when you get on the target it literally locks them in animation which is great for 1v1 situations um these, these are the two that usually people will pick based off whether they want to go a light armor or heavy armor but they're not the end all be all um the dual blade does have some invisibility and a knockdown as well as a big attack for burst where the polex has a huge damage manipulation or defense manipulation in one of their abilities where they can take away about 60 percent of your armor and then basically nuke you so those are kind of the two premier for 1v1ing just depends on which one you like better dual blades more of the fast pace gameplay more of the ninja assassin type gameplay where the poleaxe is more of the big brute that's just going to go in he doesn't care about anything and he's going to kill you so those are the first two Moving along, the next is the short sword and shield. Um, this is actually a very powerful defensive option. Um, it has a skill called Ironside that gives you a 125% defense increase for eight seconds, making you almost unkillable for that eight seconds. Obviously you can still die, but it makes it very hard for you to get killed. Um, obviously one of the worst situations I see is when the short swords turn it on and then run into like five heroes and think they can't die. You can die, just makes it a little bit easier and you can take a little bit more punishment. 
but this is a great option for people who want that 1v1 type of gameplay but prefer more of a defensive style. Next up we have the short bow. The short bow is more of your machine gun type of class with rapid shots for high DPS. Um, it does have a few dots in there as well to give you some dot pressure to help you wither your opponents away. Kind of chip away at them. Um, and then you have a lot of space creating abilities to help you with kiting. So that way you don't let the melees kind of just run up on you and do what they want. Um, it's a very versatile class and great for one to be wanting. Then for the spear, the spear is really like the tank buster of the game. Um, with the spear, it has a lot of armor manipulation for your enemy. So as far as stripping away armor, kind of similar to the poleaxe, but it has it in multiple abilities, as well as giving you more defensive stats when you land your abilities. Um, so what I would say is you want to make sure that you s use this class if you're actually thinking from a competitive standpoint where you're going against enemies that have a lot of armor like mauls, pole arms, and short swords. Um, it's any good spear guy can take out any one. So it's also, it's a great class to actually learn if you want to learn that type of style. So moving along to the next play style, which is the general play style basically the the leader the one who wants to kind of get his troops in position and play the battlefield like a real warlord um for these weapons i would recommend the musket the nodachi and the maul <laughs> and yes i know people are going to hate me recommending the maul but the, it it's a weapon deal with it um the musket is your range option for this type of gameplay it has a lot of aoe with the caltrops and all the grenades that you have in it so it gives you a lot of AOE control. It allows you to knock enemies back, knock shields back. The Caltrops slow enemies as they come through an area, allowing for your damage dealers to get in there and start to wipe people out, setting up siege, setting up counterplay, even just choking off a point so it, your teammates can actually get where you need them to be so you can make a counterattack. So it's, break, it's a great class for breaking up um, coordinated formations and helping you control the map. Um, the next weapon we're going to go over would be the Nodachi. Um, this weapon is, has a very wide variety. Um, it has a lot of cleave and some good crowd control for locking people up, as well as locking up units. Um, it's lifesteal. It's the only weapon in the game that has inherent lifesteal for the user, which makes you able to still be able to kind of duel, but still gives you the ability to cleave like a, and control the map as well. It's kind of that happy medium. Most people, this is actually the beginner class that a lot of people start off with. One, because it's a gigantic cantana, so you can't get away from loving one of those. But it's a relatively straightforward class and, you know, medium armor plus the lifesteal makes you able to duel, makes you able to kind of fight until you kind of figure out what you really like. Or you can just play the class and stay where you're at if you really like it. And the last one, but not least, is the Maul. Um, you'll probably see millions of YouTube videos about the Maul and hear it on Twitch and all that kind of stuff. The Maul is a very powerful weapon. Um, it literally has an ultimate that allows you to pick up your enemy and pull them into your units or into your team. It's, it's the ultimate displacement. Um, it also has a lot of AOE built into it and a lot of block break. So it is a great weapon for controlling units. It's a great weapon for controlling the map. If you get too close to a mall and they have their ultimate, you might as well consider yourself dead because they're literally going to throw you over their shoulder and take you to the promised land of death. So great weapon. Not a lot of people like people that play them, but that's what shows how great it is. Um, the last and final play style we're going to go over is the support. Um, the weapons I would recommend for support would be the long sword, the long bow, and the glaive. Um, the glaive is actually the more offensive option for the support. It has a very high damage cleave, similar to the Nodachi, but where it lacks in sustain, it makes up in damage. It also has the ability to give a buff that buffs up everybody in a radius around you. It buffs, buffs up their damage. So it's very good for helping people like the general who may have... Um, shock units who want to charge in you buff them up before they go in um, if you're sitting on a wall with an archer unit having a glaive up there who can one defend if any many units come up there with their high damage and cleave and then they can also buff their already high damage from them being usually glass cannon units with their buff it makes it a great great class to learn um, especially for team oriented gameplay 
The next is the longbow. Um, this is your sniper class, if you would. So this is the class that sits all the way in the back of the fight. They try to get as many headshots as possible. Obviously, their headshots are very strong. Um, but they also have a lot of manipulation where they can take and strip armor away from opponents. So let's say, for example, you and your, your bro are fighting somebody. Well, if you're up on the wall and you hit them with a specific ability, I can't think of the name right now, it actually strips away um, that person's armor. So that way you or buddy can finish the fight or whatever the case may be. And also you're giving them range damage as well where you're safe. Um, so it has a lot of utility, has some good crowd control, has some good AOE. So it's a very good class for somebody to have. You probably want to have at least one or two long bowls on your team if you're making a, you know, um, a competitive team. And last but not least, the longsword. On um, the longsword is your tanky support. Um, this weapon is currently the only one that allows you to heal your units and allies, making it a wonderful weapon to learn. Um, because it does the same thing that the glaze does with its buff, but it heals instead of increases damage. Um, what it lacks in damage, it makes up in utility and CC because they can literally CC you forever. They have a great block. They're very hard to kill. And if a good longsword can beat any 1v1er if he plays it correctly. All in all, um, for this section of the guide, for my first answer, in general, my advice to new players would be to look through each weapon and think of how you want to play the game. Um, every weapon, like we just went over, has a place in the game. You just have to figure out where that place is. Um, I will be coming up with more in-depth weapon guides for each one as I kind of go through them and level them up and find out the little perks that are that I might not even know about. But for me, I'm personally a big 1v1 type, so I prefer dual blade. So if you like it or don't like it, let me know in the comments section below. Let me know what kind of playstyle you think you would actually like to play. And for the second question, so the second question was, what do I do with all the stuff that I get? Um, it's actually more straightforward once you get it down. On the screen, you can see what I would recommend. Um, I did this so you can pause, write down, or screenshot um, the list so you can have it. Um, but I will briefly go over each one in the video just so you can kind of see where I'm coming from. Um, so the first one, I would say salvage any weapon you currently are not training with. For materials unless you get a purple or gold weapon um so in basic sense like if you're going with nadashi right so if you get let's say a green spear or a white musket and you're not training that particularly break it down immediately regardless of what level it is and get the materials for it um because later on when you actually finish the main weapon you want and you start thinking about what other weapons you want to learn you'll by then you'll be dropping or be able to make a better version of it anyway so just collect the resources for it all right for the second step you want to make sure you're using your experience cards now this is specific for your hero experience not really your unit experience use all of your hero experience cards as soon as you can um, for the unit experience cards use them when you know what units you want to level up so you want to hold on to those and then once you find your core units Use them so you can level them up as quickly as possible. But there's no reason to hold on to the hero experience cards. Use them as quickly as you can since they go by match, not by time. Um, step three, focus on your weapon skill page on one weapon at a time. So a lot of people and a lot of people get into this when they start the game, they want to try all the weapons out. That's cool. But you need to kind of figure out what you want your main weapon to be. And then when you start getting the books where you can get the skill pages, only get it for one weapon so you can max that weapon out. If you start spreading it thin, you'll never have a fully maxed out weapon that you can actually evaluate in the end game. And the end game comes pretty quickly if you play the game enough. Um, if you don't know from the beginning what you want to do, just leave the books closed and don't open them until you figure out what, game, what weapon you want to level up. That's the best way I can put it for you. So for step four, we have save all your low level schematic for weekly quest. So once a week, you will get a weekly quest where you can craft a piece of equipment. Later on in the game, this really won't matter, but for beginners, this is actually really good to save the low levels. So that's the white, the green schematics, simply because the weapons aren't really that good. But once a week, it will allow you to complete that quest by you saving those without having to use the larger schematics you'll need for better weapons. 
Uh, beside that, obviously, until you figure out what weapon you really want to use or what you would have crafted to, just save the bigger schematics, so the blues and the purples. The purples are really, really good, but they're really, really rare and really, really expensive. It's really as simple as that. All right, guys, we have made it to the fifth and final tip. So the final tip is use your event currency. Uh, so with the event currency, it's actually self-explanatory, but you when you press circle on your menu, it actually brings up the different events. So usually you see this when you first log in, but a lot of people don't realize that. So you gotta press O, circle, O, whatever you wanna call it, to bring it up. And then you'll do you'll do your daily sign-ins, your weeklies, whatever the case may be. And then activities is where you'll find it. So right now, because season seven is right around the corner, you won't see it. But this is where you spend your event currency in the Imperial store. Uh, if a lot of people miss this point, when you play the game and you get those special items, make sure to use everything. Usually, the currency actually only has a certain amount that <coughs> is available to be purchased. So you want to buy as much as you can, so that way you can get a, a leg up and catching up to the veteran players. So if you made it this far into the video, I'd like to say thank you for stopping in and watching the whole thing all the way through. Hopefully you got some good information from this and it helps you with your starting of Conqueror's Blade. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitch and Trovo and Twitter. Um, that's uh, where I also stream it as well as YouTube. And we do have a Patreon up. So if you feel the need, become a Patreon today. Beside that, you all have a wonderful day and see you guys in the next video. Peace. You know that they with me, pockets got halos. Uh -huh. All them big guys, yeah, bitch, I kept it real from the jump. And no one told me it'd be easy, no, the road ain't always smooth. Yeah, I ran into some bumps. But they say, hey, what don't break you, gonna make it. I done came a long I way, I got it, and I say thank you. Hey.